Welcome back. Fino here with a guide for the fourth Gilfest exhibition quest. This one pits you against the menacing trio of Taiga, Jean Archer, and Zerk Nobu. Each has a break bar, and while their health values don't look too bad, this fight's got some nasty mechanics that'll have you spinning. First off, each character has their NP damage gutted, but they have single card type resistances. Taiga has Quick, Jean has Arts, and Nobu has Buster. When you hit them, they terraform the field. Taiga makes a forest, Jean makes the ocean, and Nobu makes California. Each activation overwrites the current field buff, but more importantly, each benefits from their favorite terrain type, getting damage reduction, attack, and NP damage. These mechanics collectively make what I call Phase 1, and the ultra-short, broad strokes version is that you generally don't attack the same character twice, you don't bust your brave chain into Nobu, and you make sure you don't attack someone on their NP turn. Without their field buff, enemy NPs are just big, wet noodles, and in fact, Jarcher gives you a ton of charge just from being hit by hers. Truth be told, this part's pretty simple. With only one empowered character at any given time, you have a lot of control over the fight's tempo. When you start popping bars, you enter phase 2 and things get a lot more complicated. Once a character is on their final bar, they gain an extra effect on their chosen field and create two fields when they're hit. Nobunaga burns on hit and brings out the forest and fire fields, Jarcher has fire and water and gets crit damage, and finally Taiga makes the forest and water fields while getting one instance of debuff immunity. So right off the bat, you can end up with a situation where only one of the three enemies takes regular damage. Of course, you can also end up in a situation where only one or two of the enemies is in Phase 2, while the rest stay in Phase 1. So you have all these extra balls to juggle, but the primary issue is that as you get closer to finishing the fight, you'll see your damage plummet while you eat more damage in turn. Eventually, you'll hit a point where the remaining enemies have overlapping protection, and that's a very hard spot to win from, unless they're at low health already. Alright, here's the part where I give you the bad news. Of all the Gilfest exhibition quests, this is the one I couldn't finish on its first run. It's fucking hard, and there's so much that can go wrong in a given run. To start, all three enemies have hard mitigation with evades and invulns. Jean can also self-charge, which really sucks late into a fight. And the empowered characters can easily crit your team to death, especially Jean. So you just kill Jean first, right? Well, you can, but it's not quite that clean cut of a choice. Jean is dangerous, but Nobunaga is extremely volatile, and the one you probably want to focus down in a standard run. Unlike the others, she has a turn-based evade, her phase 2 burn can ruin your late game guts, and as a berserker, she'll be hitting you hard on basic cards. But with that said, let's turn to Atlas Academy, which has accumulated a list of clears for this particular fight. Now I have to start by giving them some shit, because their blur might be correct on a pedantic level, but it absolutely undersells how rough this is. Three of the clears are solos, but they use level 100 characters and finish with almost no margin for error. Curiously, these all have three enemies on their final bar before offing any of them, and they end with killing Nobunaga. Something to consider if you're planning to go the solo route as well. What really caught my eye was the free-to-play clear. This one runs a full team, and it looks like the big requirement is to get Merlin from a friend. Otherwise, they use the quick AoE character to burn down Nobu while keeping Taiga healthy. To keep safe, they use the Mash Merlin combo and they liberally pop Illusion during Phase 1 against John NPs. They kill off Nobu and get John to bar 2 around the same time. Here, things slow down substantially. They sink damage into Jean while her buff is still up, switching to Taiga when Jean is about to NP. They repeat this until Taiga gets close to her break bar. This is where things get dangerous. Taiga's Phase 2 field buffs Jean as well, so your hard mitigation starts to matter a lot more. The player in this video swaps in a single target attacker around this time to try and burn down Jean. In fact, the character he picks is Summer Jolter. By the end of the fight, the AoE character rotates back in, and the duo finish off Jean and then Taiga. I'll link the video down below, it's quite lengthy, but you might want a closer look at the footage, as opposed to the B-roll that I've had on screen. While impressive, I do have to note a few things. Firstly, both the single target and AoE servants seem to be using Grudge Match. It is possible to get multiple limit broken copies. Trust me on that. But for a free-to-play, that's kind of a tall order. Even getting one extra copy is going to take some doing, so if you're in the position of needing to borrow Merlin, you could be in trouble there. Secondly, it's a long clear, and as you've seen, a lot of things can go wrong in this fight. For instance, Jean could crit your core character from full health 30 minutes into a 40-minute run, and that's no fun. As a whole, this fight is annoying for a lot of reasons. First of all, there aren't any hard and fast rules to guide your decision-making. That in RNG is prevalent here. These two factors mean that the same strategy can give different results, and it's hard to parse out what works and what doesn't. Sorta of turns that horizon of possibilities into a murky swamp of ideas that sometimes work, and sometimes don't. If you want to pave your own way, you'll have to do a lot of experimentation, especially when it comes to picking your single target finisher. 
I'm sorry to say it's vague advice, but the best I can say is that you should play to your account's stronger characters as long as they have good survival tools. You're eating huge amounts of damage in the final few turns, so you need someone who can take damage and dish it out without much babysitting. Oh, one more thing. You can't command spell revive, but you can use them for health and noble phantasms. If you have a solid run that's just a little short in the damage department, there's always the dishonorable way. The summon ticket's not gonna judge, though the Kiyohime you pull might. Like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more, and come hang out with me on Twitch where I stream every weekend, Friday through Sunday at 3pm Pacific Time. Catch you there.